Okay, so we've got our software loaded on the Arduino. Now disconnect this guy. I'm not going to need the computer for a while. What I'm going to do now is get all of my inputs and outputs, well, almost all of my inputs and outputs hooked up to here. Go ahead and unplug this. So, we've got soil probe. What I did on the ones I shipped was a little hot glue in there to hold this guy in place. And then again, optional, but I used that liquid um, electrical tape, liquid tape stuff to fully cover this side. That's your light sensor, so you don't want to get it on there, but everything else here you can kind of pin it over. It'll actually hold a coating over these pins, which is useful if you're using it in a moist environment, which you probably are. So one last step on assembly of our soil probe, might as well do that now. Loosen the little screw, stuff one of these in, loosen the other screw, stuff the second in, add this little piece of acrylic, the purpose of which is to keep these in nice consistent distance apart from each other to get nice and accurate soil moisture readings from them. I put it so that those just protrude from there. Tighten the screws up. Seal it however you want to, and you're basically good to go. So, Ethernet cable, connect to there. You'll be doing this all inside of your enclosure eventually if you want to, or figure out some way of leaving it out like this. Ethernet connects across there. Now we've got our different wire assemblies. I'm going to leave out the relays for now. And the five wire harness is for the rotary encoder. We're going to do that one first. So get them all in order, you can judge by the color. And then you'll see these are labeled real small, but one of them is labeled encoder. So you're going to go one by one or in bulk after you do it a bunch of times. 
slide these on, push them in. You'll see they'll be right against the black part down there. And then the easiest way to tell how to orient this is to have this in the upper right corner. And at that point, it basically goes straight through to everything. That's opposite of how I have it set up to mount in the, in the box. You'll actually rotate the main board to mount like this, and there'll be a slight twist to your uh, two wire harnesses to the LCD and breakout board, but it's not the end of the world. So, our breakout board like that, you can judge by the color, how it's oriented. The color of the wires and the harness. With our LCD, we're going to do the same thing. common mistake is that you get wires crossed over in there like I have with the yellow and the orange. It's not going to end the world if you connect it wrong and then have to go back and check your harnesses, but you know, try not to. Okay, these look Nice in order. Now connect to the other end. To the pins labeled. CD. Now we should be good to plug it in, and nothing's showing up on our LCD. Your LED may or may not come on. That's going to actually depend on the readings we're getting from one of those sensors. It shares one of them shared one of the relay outputs shares a pin with the LCD. So what I'm doing now is adjusting this potentiometer. Go ahead and initially turn it all the way uh, to the left, counterclockwise. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's saying Luke's Garden, 30 days left. It's a little dark, so I'm going to turn the screw about an eighth of a turn. And this will vary a bit depending on, well, I don't know why that varies on LCDs, but the exact setting for yours might be a little different. On mine, it's turn all the way to the left, and then maybe an eighth of a turn back to the right. So it says Luke's Garden, 30 days left. As I turn this, now it says light semi lux proportion 0, 0.00. You hold your sensor in or out of the light. Oh, see it's going up to 92 lux. If I get it really out of the light, it drops down to like eight or four. I can go in and by clicking the rotary encoder in, I see target 250 lux proportion 0.7. If I rotate, I'll show you the current reading for infrared light, visible light with more rotation, lumens, and then at any time I can click again to get back to the light actual reading. Rotating, I get to moisture level. If I click, it will show me my target level. I click again, it'll go back to the moisture level reading. And 
And I just actually touch my tongue right to this. Oh, nothing's happening because one of our probes popped out of <coughs> screw terminal because I didn't tighten it enough. Huh. Moisture level was reading zero, now it's reading like between four and 20 because I was touching that. Okay, now, little shock to my tongue and moisture level. It's going up as high as 300. Turn the dial some more, you'll get your temperature and humidity readings. We're at 21.4 Celsius. 54.9 humidity if you breathe on the temp and humidity sensor. Up to 24.7 Celsius and like 90% humidity. That sensor's got like a second or two lag, so breathe on it a couple times. Turn the encoder more, it's showing me just some, these are just program values for now. We can expand it later. Um, and then back to the main menu, Luke's Garden, 30 days left. Oh yeah, if I click there, it'll say planted however many days ago. It'll say what I programmed in is the source of my seeds, DH Landreth and Habaneros. And then I can click again to get back. Sometimes you have to click twice. It's actually surprisingly difficult to time what should count as a click and what shouldn't. Um, and we're back to the main menu. So we've got all our sensors working. Now, next step will be to, in your box or your enclosure or whatever, connect your full relay setups. And then what you do with those is, you take your three wire harness, the white cord facing that way, it says Omron, the white will be closest to the O. And then here, you'll see three pins labeled Relay 1 and Relay 2. Oh, I don't know if you can hear that, but as I connected that, little click showing that the relay is activated. Orientation on the other ones the same way. White cord towards the O. And there you go. Now, if you listen carefully, as if I lick this, after about three seconds, you heard the click. That was the water pump relay turning off. If you have these backwards, just switch these two cables. If you have one controlling water that you want to control light, flip those around and it'll change it. So there you go, you're pretty much done with setup. Now if you want to add the data streaming, just follow the pictures on the site. If anybody needs it, let me know. And I can add um, the actual, I can do a video of that as well. But if you want to add data streaming, you would pop in your electric GIMP card, follow the instructions to program that, add your connectivity to Cosmo or wherever else, and go to town. So thanks for your support, thanks for watching, and let me know any questions.